Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Refuge Tea here with my granny's closet. First of all, I want to get into some admin stuff, but before I get to that, I want to thank all of my returning subscribers for coming back and witnessing all the craziness that I do here on my channel. <laughs> thank you very much. And if you're new here, thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoy today's video. With um, Now, let's get into the admin stuff. Um, let's see. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, here on YouTube. You guys can follow me all under my granny's closet. Uh, Facebook is where I sell all of my ID, my IDs, all of my IDs, <laughs> all my items that I sell at my farmer's market. You can follow me there. It is under my, just my granny's closet, no 3G. Now, with all admin stuff out of the way, <laughs> I post regularly, by the way, regularly. Um, I guess I'm not done with admin. <laughs> I have, I do three videos a week, or I aspire to do three videos a week here on YouTube. Now, if it seems a little bit darker here in this room, it's because the power went out in our neighborhood because of the high winds right now, and they're trying to restore some stuff. So, I am using natural lighting through my window. Yeah. But my videos drop every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and... Forgive me if you're new here for all my um, my regular subs and followers. They know already I am a crazy all over the place person because of my ADHD. So if you're new here, that's what you're in for. <laughs> I change the subject a lot. I probably don't finish some of my subjects that I bring or topics that I bring up. And today's video, anyways, let's move on is about all the stuff that doesn't or hasn't sold at my markets at all or often enough. However, I still bring them back, or I still put them out there. If you hear noise in the background, by the way, my kids are home, they're on spring break, they will be for two weeks. And um, so if you hear them in the background, there it's okay. It's just my kids being my kids. <laughs> all right, let me get some of these buckets, baskets, bins off of my table and we'll get to some of these items. Now, if you are a regular vendor or a market person like me, I do market, a uh, farmer's market, technically speaking, Monday through Friday, or Monday through Friday. Every Saturday, sorry guys, I'm not feeling well, so my absent-mindedness and my spaciness is going to be a little bit more than normal. I started filming it on Friday, and you can see it in my video where I'm just breathless out of air. And I started feeling my asthma being affected um, just by the high winds that are out there right now. Saturday after my market, I, um, I, I was just not feeling good. And my knee has been out for quite some time. And it, it popped out of place. And I, it popped back into place yesterday. So the swelling has gone down. So I have almost full range back in my knee. And if you have rheumatoid arthritis or any kind of autoimmune disease th that causes chronic pain, you guys will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, so I haven't been feeling well since Saturday. I started getting a really bad headache. I still have a really bad headache. Yesterday was my worst day. Today I felt a little bit better, but I still had a, I still need to rest. And my husband's probably going to not be happy with me that I'm doing this video because I told him I would rest. I wouldn't do much but sit and probably crochet, but he was like, you probably just need to rest your entire body. <laughs> so, um, my throat hurts still not too bad, not too much, but, um, I'm going to drink some hot tea when I'm finished here. Um, but back to market. So if today my, my speech is going to be a little bit slower, I'm going to take my time. Oh, before I forget, cause I already did t-shirt of the day is 1984. I was three years old. I have Bumblebee Transformer. I love the Transformers and Bumblebee is my number one. Him and Optimus Prime. Ratchet. Um, let's see. Ironhide. Yeah. All those good Autobots. Um, all right. Let's get to it. So today's video is going to be about, like I said, all of the items that tend not to sell or only sell sporadically or haven't sold at all. Um, I sell a, or I make a ton of items for crocheters and knitters. 
So I make notions pouches, I make stitch markers, I make um, project bags, okay? So I also make these kits and I sell retractable measuring tapes as well. I've only sold maybe about three or four of the retractable um, measuring tapes and they're only two dollars that I sell them for but I you could see I have a whole basket full of them and they don't sell so I won't be buying more but I do put them out there for that occasional person that wants to like little kids tend to want to go through this like um, I've had tons of little boys like mommy I want this so I might bring it down to a dollar because it was just I think I'm just gonna bring it down to a dollar and then sell it and then I won't sell these more anymore again and that's something that I can encourage encourage you guys to do is that if you have some item that doesn't sell bring you can either do two one of two things you can remove it from your market from your table and you can wait a few months three months I have a rule of three so you wait three months reduce the price or adjust the price it doesn't have to be reduced but if it doesn't sell you pull it you figure out what you want to change from your product um, adjust the price accordingly put it back out there after three months and see how it goes from there or if it's something such as um, you know notions or just small little um, assortment of items reduce the price sell what you have and then don't purchase or don't sell it again so that's one of my rules that I have however these are part of my um, notions that I make for my customer base they do sell they do sell I've sold quite a few of them However, they're at a stagnant time, so they've reached a peak. And people will look at them, and I think it's because, okay, here is another rule that I have. I think it's because they're in this basket, and you can't see what they are, all right? Now, I sell these um, for $7. They are little Notions travel boxes, so they have a tapestry needle, um, uh, travel scissors and measuring fabric measuring tape and then they also have stitch markers if you can see in the back there um, now I have tons of that I ten made tons of these there's like almost I would say less than 50 because I've sold quite a few of them so there's probably more in the 35 range that I have left in here and they're seven dollars I also found these cute little stickers that go on them for knitters um, and crocheters. Let's see, and little um, so so seamstresses. Now these aren't doing a very good job with you know pushing them. So what I'm gonna do is another rule that I have is if it's laying flat like this in a display box or if it's just not catching your customer's eye, what I do is I remove it from my table, I find another way to display it so that it's like, boom, right out there, right in your, um, you know, in everybody's face and their cara, it's like, whoa. <laughs> so that's, these are two items that I sell for my um, crocheters, knitters, seamstresses. But like I said, I do those items so I also have my stitch markers now these for my knitters and crocheters these however I've I've sold even less of these I bought on Amazon you know these charms and I thought it was really cool to see these charms and I was just like oh they're so cool so let me encourage you in this. If you see an item and you like it, you can get it to make it and sell it. However, um, it would only just touch base with your likes and your desires, <laughs> if, if I'm putting it correctly. I don't like the color pink. I don't like the color pink. Um, I've never liked the color pink. <laughs> 
and it's just a per personal preference for, of mine. My favorite color, as you guys can see, is neon green. It's neon green in everything that I do. But, and I like bright, bright colors. I like green. I like orange. I like, uh, you know, purple. Those are my top three colors. And black. I'm always wearing black. I'm wearing black right now. Um, but my daughter loves pink. My One of my sons loves blue. My other son's favorite color is red. A lot of my customer base likes pastel colors. I love pastel colors. I love rainbow. I love all colors, but my favorites are neons. Now, if I can encourage you one more again about one thing else is that buy outside of your comfort zone. If you don't like a particular color, that's okay. A customer will like that color. Purchase that color, make something in it. I guarantee you, you'll find somebody who will like it and purchase it. There is tons of colors that I don't care for, but I make my beanies in or anything that I crochet, I make them in. Now, I was tending in the beginning to crochet items in just the bright colors that I like. I mean, I had a customer base for it, but it was few and far between. And some of my customer was coming to my market and be like, you should make more neutral colors. And a few YouTubers here, um, we're making more of neutral, more earthy based colors, those cream colors, you know, those, um, not so much pastels, but more earth tones, warm, warm and cool. I'm more of a bright radical 1980s kind of vibe, you know, but I've learned to step out of my comfort zone on purpose so that I can touch outside of, um, my usual customer base. And I've sold a lot much, a lot more because of it. So I think in this purchase that I did for my stitch markers, that long winded explanation is because of this is the reason why I haven't sold so much now. So another encouragement is that if something's not selling completely or at all, or just, um, you know, sporadically, put it next to an item that is popular. So my stitch markers go just underneath my lip balm keychain holders and um, people look at them. They're like, oh my gosh, these are so cute. I love your earrings. And that's the issue. Everybody thinks that my stitch markers are earrings and they're not. <laughs> I always tell people, hey, you know what? If you want them to be earrings, they can be earrings. You can wear them as earrings. Purchase them. Go for it. Now, I've sold maybe about four tops, five tops. So um, I have hearts. And this is the reason why people think they are earrings. Okay. They think they are earrings because they come in a pair of two. <laughs> and I, I tried my best to do it where one is different from the other, but majority of the time, like my gummy bears. So I tried a variety of it, but I liked it. I personally liked these because I personally like things like this, you know? So I think that was my mistake. I bought stuff that I liked without thinking about my customer base. And now it's staying stagnant. Now I purchased these knowing that they would go and I've sold almost all but two. Okay. And my drinks, like, I think that's so cool. They're so cool. They're amazing. I love these. My kids love them. My mom loves them. She's like, I'm just going to buy them just to wear as earrings. Miha, can you make Coca-Cola ones for me? And I'm just like, yeah, sure. Like little bobas. That's cool, right? Little sweet packets, right? Wrong. <laughs> I bought what I liked. So I, if there's one thing, another thing that I can encourage you, encourage you in is that don't buy just what you like. Buy what you think and you know what your customers would like. Otherwise, you're stuck with a pile of stitch markers that haven't sold and people think they're earrings. 
So you only get those customers that come in once in a while that just so happen to drive by and see the market on the side of the road. And you know, those kinds of customers are amazing because it's happened to me several times where people are like, I was driving by, I never knew that this existed. So I pulled over and now they come regularly and I have regular customers. And here's another thing, okay? If you have a regular customer who comes once every week or uh, every week, every time you have your market, or they come every other week, and when they do come, they drop, they drop quan, they drop, you know, money on you. And they're the reasons why you hit that mark. I had, a, I have a customer like that and she came in. Now, this is just my rule. This is for me. I wanted to bless her and thank her for supporting me because she's always in there and she's buying the same thing plus extra plus extra every time she comes in. So I was like, okay, you know what? The, grab one of those for free, you know, and it, it might be a small item, but she was so excited. She was like, oh my gosh, thank you. And it was a blessing for me to be able to bless her because she has been blessing me. And that's what I like to do with some of my customers or with all my customers that come in, you know, I, I like to bless them with something that I know that will make them happy. Something that I thought was going to sell that didn't sell that I've only sold two of actually and one this, <laughs> this past Saturday, I got this, like I always tell you guys where I get my, you know, um, makes from, this is from Taylor Rose and it's not Taylor, it's Taylor with a, a, H instead of a ER. And her very first tutorial on her YouTube channel is how to make these cutesy bun little bows for the hair. And I use alligator clips in the back. Now I sell them individually for one, $5 and then $10 for the two. And the reason why I don't reduce the price when it comes in a pack of two is because the amount of time that it takes. So I just say they're $5 each. And I don't tell them, you know, and the two pack is four. I say they're $2 each. They come in an individual pack of one and they come in a pack of two. That's what I say. Um, or I have it there posted if they don't see my post. So these don't sell often enough. However, this week <clears throat> I am making more for Easter because I know Easter ha is a big seller. So this Saturday coming up and the Saturday afterwards, I will be selling um, Easter bows so that to see if they will sell them. So I have a ton of these bows, maybe about 50. Yeah, I think about 50, less than that since I've sold a couple of them to sell but none have sold so except for aside from the two but that's okay so what i do is that i know they're gonna pick up i put i place them flat on the table so people can see i put it in rows of two on one side and in the sets of two and then on the other side next to it i put the individual ones because you never know somebody might just want one bow somebody might just want the two so I give that option, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and here are all the bows that I have that haven't sold. Now, just recently I put out my bow ties and this is a new item that I put out there because I've had several customers tell me, you don't have enough boy items. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. I don't have enough items for boys. So what I do, what I did this week was I made, or last week I made little bow ties for boys. Look at how cute those are. And you can't see the backing because my, my sticker is covering it. But, um, it has an ear, oh, you can see it right there. An earring backing, you know, the clip on earrings, just clip it right onto the bow tie. I mean, onto your clothing. And it's, it's so cute. And they're for Easter or for picture day, you know. And I got some floral ones because I know some boys or some moms like floral. 
for Easter. So I did that. I did that and I got some gingham and colors, but that's an, that's one more thing. I will not stop making my bows because they're fairly new. I've only had them for about four or five weeks at my shop. When introducing a new item to your table, don't just do it one time. Don't just, you know, get discouraged after one day because it's it didn't reach the customer base or didn't sell as well as you thought it would. That's okay. That is okay. Now, for items that you have had in your market space for years, before we get to that one, here's something that I've had since the new year, okay? Because all of my notions and, you know, stitch markers and things like that that I showed you, those I've had just be from the new year. So don't give up. It's only been three months, okay, since I've had these. And I won't give up on, you know, s selling them or putting them out because they do sell, but they'll gain traction soon. So my next item that I have that doesn't sell often, but does sell, okay, sometimes is my vintage doilies. Now, people love these. It reminds them of their grandmother. They're like, these are so cute. Um, I can't, I, it reminds me of when my great grandmother or my grandmother or my mom made doilies for the table and then they put them back because they're a pack of four and they're $20. Now, to the people or, you know, to your customers, they, not all of them, will understand the time and the effort that comes through, especially with cotton, because cotton is stiffer. Um, it's a little bit more, it's less pliable to work with. So to them, it do, they don't understand why four pieces of yarn is going to cost $20 for a pack. I won't reduce the price. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> and you shouldn't, because... I have sold several. I have sold several and I'm left with um, 11 and I've, I started out with 20. Um, they do, however, sell in my mason jars that I sell with the tea in it. Uh, so yeah, now these are brand new to this year as well. My cup cozies, I used to have, here's another item, my cup cozies. I used to have, now if you guys say cozy, that's fine, cozy. I have been corrected too much by friends <laughs> to not say cozy because if I don't say cozy, <laughs> I will get a phone call, text message, notification letting me know that you said it wrong again. <laughs> so it is cozy for me today. I used to have these put out there, but I would only have maybe five or six and it would be in one color of each. And I would think, oh man, I have a lot out there. Um, now that my business has grown, now that I my market has been out there for quite some time, I have learned that making items in a large quantity for my customers to choose from because of the size of my market space is ideal for me. Um, it doesn't have to be for you. You don't have to make multiples and multiples. I've seen people only carry six different colors and only make three of each different color and it works well for them. I've seen people only make one of each color and only carry four colors and it works well for them. And that's what I used to do. However, I have made, I, you guys can see how many colors I have. Okay. It is a plethora of color. All right. And I have rainbow colors as well. All right. But they haven't sold. And I make three of each color. They haven't. Only, I think, because it feels like they're in the background. They're not out there up front. They are in the section where my lip balm key holders are or keychains are. But people will see them and they'll look at them and they'll be like, what is this? And I don't have a description for them. I don't have 
I'm like, oh, they're cup koozies. And my mom, she's such a saleswoman. She'll, she'll grab one of my mason jar cups that I sell that has these in there, like my um, mangonada cups or my um, coffee mugs, like these, okay? She'll grab one of these and she'll be like, oh, look, it fits on the jar. You put your coffee in there, you know, keeps the condensation from your hands and it catches all the you know, moisture and she sells it for me, you know? However, instead of purchasing this, they'll go for the cup. And they'll be like, oh, you know that. So there's another item, you know, if you know that your customers are going to purchase this in something else, but then give them an option. I don't normally do this, but if they buy more than one and they ask if they, if I have it in different colors, I'm like, no, but you can choose from the colors I have out there available. And they'll do that sometimes. They'll choose from these colors, but I am OCD. So I have to have three of each color. So I reuse the ones that they, I, I, if they take them out of their cups, I save them, put them to the side, I give them the color I want, I come home, I remake the color, put it back to make it three again, and then I make another cup and put the ones that they removed out of the other cup and put it in the new cup and put it out there. <laughs> so that's me. That's just me, my little quirk. But um, so these sell, but they sell in my mugs. But I think what I'm going to do now is like I said, rearrange everything, make it work for you. If you see that it sells, but not individually, but it sells in an item that you use for something different, put these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these next to my coffee cups and my mangonada cups. I will put these next to them and then I'm going to put a sign that says, choose your cup koozie. And my coffee mugs come in a set of two cup koozies and um, they can choose from here you know, and they can put it in the bag. So that is a, another tip for you. Give them that option. And I will try to reframe from not <laughs> putting it there. Okay. So back to the lecturette hint. Perfection is perfected. And I'm, I'm just kidding. I won't wrap for you. Items that you've had for several years or for a year or more and haven't sold, but you keep putting it out there. I, my shawls sell, but it's only certain shawls that do sell. So these ones have not sold. When they find out the price, they, you know, but it's a shawl. It's a one. This is a, a shell stitch. I got this pattern off of Pinterest and I'm using the exact same yarn that they use. Um, so yeah, it is. A beautiful shawl and it's $65 but my customers see it they think it's gorgeous and they put it back because of the price um, it's difficult for them to grasp that something that they can purchase at Target is you know a $65 you know they can purchase at Target for like 25 you know but this handmade in a, you know, in it, a one yarn cotton made by hand, not a machine. <laughs> it's difficult for them to grasp, but that's okay. It is okay because all my other shawls do sell. Now these get put on a hanger and they put on a rack and they're all next to each other. Um, I think I'm going to find a way for them to be put up on my canopy. That way it is better displayed. People can see it. It's higher up at eye level instead of low to the ground where people don't generally look. So that is another idea for you. Here is another one that hasn't sold that I made. And if I've had this for about a year, this is called the Forester and it's by, um, let's see. Oh. It's by Sablabat. Okay. It's gorgeous, right? Look at that stitching. Beautiful. And this is another Hobby Lobby uh, Rainbow Rhapsody one yarn. 
Now, the shawls that for me that do sell are the Macaw Shaw. And um, I think it's just because of the way it's angled. I've sold like every single one that I've put out there. I do have one left and it's the beautiful pastel or not pastel. It's like a rainbow color, variegated. Now, those, those shawls sell, but those two I've had for some time, but that's okay. They will sell one day. I won't get discouraged because I've been in this game for over 30 years selling my items even as a kid and being at market since I was like six, you know, years old and carrying that knowledge up until now. If I don't sell anything, I'm okay with it because I know that I'm going to have good days and I'm going to have bad days and I don't let it affect me only because I know that there's you know, a person out there or a customer base out there or people out there that are going to come to the market, see one item that hasn't sold in a really long time and they're going to love it and they're going to purchase it. Like, so funny, my cocoon purple shawl that I posted on my Facebook page thinking it was, I, you know, I, ha I had it for almost two years. I've had people come up and be like, oh, I'm going to come back next week and I'm going to get it. They don't that's okay. It doesn't bother me. Um, I've had people message me inquiring at the photo about the photo that I posted on my Facebook page. Oh, you know, how much is it? It's $110. Oh, okay. Thanks, but no thanks. Okay. No problem. It just price wasn't for you. But this past Saturday, somebody walked in, went straight for it and grabbed it and was like, my husband's gonna, you know, be okay with me purchasing it later. So she got it. I was excited. She loved it. And she went home happy because she was able to get something for herself. And it was, it's been cold out here in Southern California for us. Okay. 64 degrees is cold for us, you guys. <laughs> it's like scarf, beanie, jacket, booties, then our clothes, and then more scarves, <laughs> beanies. We get cold, okay? Because we're used to 110 degree. We're, you know, it's similar to Texas, but we don't get snow. Texas gets snow. <laughs> we don't. All right. So next up, items that have not sold that I've had for years. And I'm talking like five, let's see, three, four years, okay? Four years. Have not sold. I've only sold one. So... These are my coffee bean um, cowls, okay? They go around your neck, and they keep you nice and cozy. This one's patriotic, and this is made by Karen Cake Chunky. Chunky Cakes. Yep, Karen Chunky Cakes, your inspiration. I have them up here. You can see that. I have them up there. Whew. Turning around so quick right now made me dizzy. I need to... Hurry this up and go lie down for a bit. My, me not feeling well, and I, okay, <laughs> doesn't seem like a normal, because I'm, you know, naturally active person, but I can already feel like <laughs> I need to lie down. So I only have a few more items to show you guys, and then I'm going to be done. And then off with me to bed, right? Um, I sell these for $40 each. Now, you guys know how much these cakes are. <laughs> Okay, they're not for the light pocket <laughs> book. So, um, they're $40. Oh, the power's back on! Yay! <laughs> Yay, my kids are excited. They can turn the TV back on and watch it instead of just sit there <laughs> twiddly because I told them to be quiet while I'm on my live, you know, or my video. Okay, so I got this off of, I think I mentioned it before. I got it off of Pinterest. Um, I do. I did. I didn't talk about this before. I think when I was going through my bins and I told you guys how my sister and my husband and her friend, you know, talk about how they pronounce the word Pinterest. How do you guys pronounce the word Pinterest? I say pin in in interest. So I say Pinterest because the way I say interest or interesting, I don't pronounce a T after the N in the beginning. I say interesting. Um, that's just the way that I pronounce the word. <laughs> so I always say Pinterest and they, it gets on their nerves. 
And they're like, and I'm like, well, how am I supposed to say it? I don't say interesting. I just say it's interesting. So <laughs> it's a whole big convoluted explanation. I apologize. So back to the coffee bean cow. I got it on Pinterest. Okay, sister. And you know, sister's BFF. <laughs> I got it off of Pinterest. Um, I made it with the birthday cake, um, chunky cake, the anniversary birthday cake. If you guys know where I can find another birthday cake, you know, cake, Karen cake, let me know. It only, it came out like four years ago. And when I saw it on Pinterest, I was just like, oh my gosh, I have to have that cake. I have to make that cow. And it's a long cowl too. because It's, it's kind of like the um, snood from Wednesday. And... It was long enough for you to put it over your head and oh man, I, I, my, my son gave it to my sister, um, his godmother, his Nina for Christmas one year. And, um, now I'm like, I need to find that cake again because I want to make my own. So I have three of these at $40. I used to have four, <clears throat> but they just haven't sold. I only sold one. And it was turquoise and it was from a friend and you know it was that first day that I started my market that first day I came I came to this particular market and it was so crazy because I had done a market with this woman before hey Val <laughs> and um, her and her husband sell beef jerky it's hard for me to say beef jerky because for the longest time my son has said beef turkey with a T like gobble gobble turkey and so now we say beef turkey, uh, kind of like horsey corn. My daughter says horsey corn because she can pronounce unicorn. And <clears throat> it's a horsey, it has a corn. So she said horsey corn. So now some words we use from when they were kids, kind of like, you know, I told you guys, uh, sanitizer. We don't say hand sanitizer because my, my daughter calls it sanitizer when she was little. So <laughs> anyways, anyways, sorry guys, this video is going to be long already. I'm talking slow. I talk a lot. And yeah, so these haven't sold, but I keep putting them out because my doll heads need something around their neck and I put a matching beanie on top. The beanie normally sells. My beanies are my number one out of everything that I make. My beanies are my number one seller. These, however, do not fly off the shelves. They barely budge. <laughs> I've only sold one over the four years that I've had these. I these I'm going to keep putting out, you know, um, if you have something that you like and you make it in colors that you're not normal or not used to, not normal, not used to, it's okay. Somebody out there is going to like it. Somebody's going to want it, you know? So I keep putting those out. These I also put out. Okay. These are my men kerchief cowls. Um, I showed this to you, these to you guys in my last video of, again, with those for my market when I was showing you guys what, what I have in my bins. Um, so they have buttons so that you can adjust it. So all you do is take the button out. Now people look at it and they wish that the girls, the, the women are like, can you make it in different colors? Yeah, they come in different colors. Okay. Well, when they come in different colors, I want to get one for myself. So all it is, is a C2C, for those of you who know how to crochet, C2C, corner to corner stitch, and it goes up, you know, and you stop. You sew on the buttons at each corner, and because of the C2C, you have these little slots in here, these slits, that you can put in there and, and adjust to your neck. Now, I made it in masculine colors or dark colors, but they haven't sold. They haven't sold. Now... One thing that I did forget to bring in here was my men um, head wraps. I have head wraps that go over the baseball caps. They sell, which is crazy because they didn't sell at first. That's another thing. If it doesn't sell at first, but then it catches traction and then it starts to go. Okay. I started out with six of them and I only have two left. Um... And so people keep coming to purchase them. And that's what I mean. I had them for about maybe three months. 
I was about to remove them and I'm actually going to remove them and redo them, like redo the stitching and then bring them back. And I sell them for 20. Now these are $35. These are $35. Um, and these are, let's see, <clears throat> I believe it's, um, I want to say Premier's Puzzle. Yeah, Premier Puzzle. This yarn is Premier Puzzle. Those items don't sell, but I keep them out there because I do have a small customer base for some of them. Now, for the cowls, the shawls, and for the menkerchiefs, they have not sold once. But that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. So, if I can encourage you, for those that go to a market don't do well and then just back off and I'm not going to do that again. What happened in that market wasn't based off of, you know, anything that you did wrong it, or anything that anybody else did wrong. It was based off of the customer base that came to that market that day. So if you choose to go to the market again, I always say try once, try it twice. Because if you don't try it again, you will get that one person that say, hey, I saw you last year because it's happened to me plenty of times, okay? But you're going to get those customers that are going to down talk your items, you know, and it's not, try not to let it get to you because you're going to get that one person that's going to come and love it and buy it. Just like I did with my cocoon koozie or my cocoon um, cardigan. Uh, I've had a lot of people that were like, oh, that's just out of my cut, my, you know, budget right now. I'm like, it's okay. No problem. Don't worry about it. Because I have those moments too. I know you guys have those moments too, where it's just difficult for you to purchase at that moment, you know, but I hope I encouraged you guys in some things. I don't get a lot of people purchasing on my Facebook page. Uh, I don't look too hard at my views. I, I try to keep up with the comments, you guys. I didn't realize that this was right here is where I'm going to end the video, but I'm going to talk about this really quick. Um, if it took me too long to respond to your comments on previous videos, I apologize because there is this thing called YouTube source that I had downloaded and that, but I deleted it when I got my new phone because I didn't know that's what I needed to notify me that I had keep people commenting on my YouTube videos. <laughs> so I apologize. I download, I download it again. It notifies me that I have a comment and I try to respond as quickly as possible. I try not to let too long of a period go by between, um, comments. Now to the person that said he is good on my organization of my bins, I apologize. Thank you. He is good. I had no idea who this person was talking about. <laughs> Until I re realized where the comment, what video the comment had come from. I was like, oh, my Rocky, my dog, Rocky. <laughs> so I apologize. Um, it just hit me uh, last night. I was too um, not feeling well to respond. So today I will respond back to you and I will say thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> he is my good little puppy. Um so thank you guys for joining me today. I hope that today's video was helpful in any way with any market, but you guys are amazing. You're uh, to quote, you know, Bumblebee, you're wonderful. You're wonderful. Um, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my video. Don't forget to ring that notification bell to let and notify you guys of any videos that I drop here on YouTube. Don't forget to follow me on all of my other social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and I do have a Pinterest <laughs> uh, all under my granny's closet 3G, Facebook only my granny's closet. I that's it for me to guy for me today, guys. I hope you have a blessed rest of your Monday, a blessed rest of your week, and I will see you next time. Peace out. I don't wanna act too high and mighty cause tomorrow I may fall down on my face. Lord, I thank you for sunshine, I thank you for rain. I thank you for joy and I thank you for pain. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day.